So it's nice to, to see you and, and have this chance to talk you. to you a little bit about the, the stuff that you've written. Yes. You know, I, I know a little bit about you, but um, I wonder if you could just explain how that whole story of you getting into writing came about. Yes, well, when I was a very little fellow at school, at my second school, I, as I remember, people used to want to sit next to me because whilst we should have been doing our schoolwork, I would be telling them stories. When I was a very little fellow, I had a shoebox. This was just after the war, and I had my. This was my library, and I collected war stories and cowboy stories in my little shoebox uh, library, and uh, so I developed a taste for stories. And he used to tell people who would sit next to me stories, just making them up as I mm -hmm. went along. Mm -hmm. Based a little bit on. Stories that you'd been I reading? I think or? very much based mm -hmm. on, <laughs> taken directly from it, yes, mm -hmm. war stories and mm -hmm. heroes out in the desert. And, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and then what happened after that? How did it...? Uh, nothing happened mm -hmm. after that. I then went into journalism and became professionally a writer, which I then left to become a writer. But of course I didn't. I did all sorts of other jobs. Mm -hmm. And then probably... Um, 30 years ago I started writing again but it, it was I was very much influenced by the um, the artists of the surrealist movement and a lot of my writing was surrealist and I suppose psychological the work of a younger man and I don't think it really amounted to much mm -hmm. at all mm -hmm. and then uh, Probably about five years ago, I began to write again. We got a computer, and I discovered that if you type on the computer, you can store things. And so I started writing then, and I discovered that you could print these things. And I simply wrote the stories, printed them off, and put them in a box. Mm -hmm. And that was the end of it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and yet here we are today, you know, looking at putting it out to a yes, wider audience. Yes, quite How a change. did that stage of the, the process happen? Uh, about two years ago we were in Paris for a wedding anniversary and we went to see in the Casino de Paris Slava's snow show. Slava Polunin was, is, is a Russian clown and part of his uh, performance was these three strange little creatures dressed in green tar mouldy tarpaulins with strange headdresses came on and sang the Blue Canary song, Blue 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 Canary mm. and I was just so overcome by the, <laughs> the charming pointlessness of this that all of a sudden I thought those stories that are kept in the box I could publish or present to the public under the title Blue Canary Tales. Mm -hmm. I don't know why. Mm -hmm. And uh, when I came back, I started to uh, redact them all and collate them all, and that's how I mm -hmm. came to have the website being mm -hmm. set up for me. Wonderful. The Blue Canary mm. Tales. <laughs> that's a nice story. Yes. Yeah. And it's lovely to have such an interesting back yes, to the to completely the accidental, unplanned. Yeah. Yes. Lovely. So I've been lucky enough over the, the times that you come and visit that yes. you bring me a present of a story and I've seen the stories appear one yes. followed by a period of time another, so just trickling through like that. Yes. And it was really interesting, you know, looking at the the, t at the stories as a collection, that mm. there there are quite often themes that, that appear yes. uh, throughout and that connect the stories yes. together and um, you know, it'd just be quite interesting to know whether those themes um, were quite deliberate or whether they um, surprised you that they, there was a, a theme running through the different stories. Did they find you or did you find them? I didn't choose a theme and then write about that theme and then choose another mm -hmm. theme and write stories about that. The themes actually came, uh, I think there are 23 tales. Mm -hmm. And 
I noticed that they tended to fall, fall into, I think it's five different mm -hmm. themes. And so it came in that order, the mm -hmm. stories first, and then the... Recognising that they're... Recognising the themes the they fall into, yes. Mm -hmm. And, and not so much the themes, we can maybe come back to that in a while, but just looking through the, the stories and remembering the ones that I've that yes. I've read through, that the, quite often the characters are um, people with some form of creative gift or skill. We've got composers, conductors, actors, yes. circus performers. Um, I'm just interested that, 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 that quite frequently there's, there's that kind of a person, someone with something to offer ideas or performance related things. How, how does that come to be? Um, well, one type of great hero that I have always had has been the uh, orchestral conductor. One person if you will, the hero uh, in charge of a, well, a symphony orchestra of 80 to 100 people. Um, so that kind of creative character mm -hmm. um, has always impressed me mm. very greatly. Mm -hmm. And I guess that theme of the hero character mm. has um, worked through the mm. different themes. I think there's religion, the American, mm. the Jewish, and uh, so on. Mm. I, I guess it's come mm. that way. They're all very interesting characters. There's, you know, maybe for some of them there are more kind of what we might call ordinary people, but quite a lot of them are, are people with something to say or an important message or a, a skill or a gift that they, yes. that, they, that they can give to the world. And then something happening in that person's life that's yes. quite dramatic or uh, interesting or tragic yes. as well. I think that's mm -hmm. right. Uh, this isn't boastful, but I, I find these the characters themselves very interesting mm. people. Mm. They're people who um, I would be very uh, pleased to meet with mm. and, and mm. talk with mm. because they are so... Mm. I think that really comes through in the stories that they're you know the characters that you create are very rich. They're mm. very real. They feel very present in the in the room with you yes. as you're as you're reading about it. And of course, that means you want to know what what happens yes. to that particular. Yes. Yeah. So you know, there's also the, the very strong religious um, element to it. Quite a lot. You know, popes, knights, um, Jew, Jewish story, Christian yes. stories. Um, that that often the, that theme yes. runs through. And um, right. where's the the kind of origins of, of your interest in that? I think because I was born and brought up as a Roman Catholic, uh, and so was you know the Jesuits say, "Give us a child until he's seven, mm -hmm. and then you can do whatever you want." But he's already set. Mm -hmm. And from that background, I then went into um, a very fundamentalist Protestant background. Um, people like the Plymouth Brethren, for instance. Uh, I've all, also always been uh, very drawn to the Hasidic Jewish mm -hmm. um, tradition. Mm -hmm. And I think it's because <coughs> these people, these groups, do attempt to um, deal with the big issues of life, creation, mm. birth, mm. life events, the moral events that take place all the way along, and then death, mm -hmm. and then, if you will, on to the end of the world. Mm. So it's a kind of total narrative. Um, and also, his historically, the role that religion has played, certainly in the West, has been absolutely enormous. Mm, it mm, isn't realised by mm. modern people so mm -hmm. much, but it, it has shaped mm. how we are mm -hmm. um, very greatly. Mm. As individual people as well as groups of yes, people. Yes, although I wonder if it may be fading now, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because the churches by and large mm. are uh, offering people mm. social mm -hmm. amelioration, Trivia, really. Mm, it mm, isn't uh, mm. offering them anything that's very. Mm. And I think that's perhaps why 
uh, we are so misunderstanding of the Muslims with this mm -hmm. very, very strong, hard, mm -hmm. definite mm -hmm. um, notion of mm -hmm. jihad. Mm -hmm. Our faith mm -hmm. is supremely mm -hmm. true and important. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you. The, the, also, one of the other themes is death and um, the, the characters that that that's the theme of the, the story about have often met quite interesting or unusual deaths. It's t it's often not a you know natural yes. end of a life. It's been so quite kind of dramatic and tragic. Yes. And I'm just interested to know where that um, you know why the characters landed in that position. Are these the so, characters you're asking about in the what I call the death quartet? Yes, the, so the, the, the clown, the clown, the um, actress, the, actress, the, the, the trapeze, uh, trapeze artist. artist. Uh -huh. um, but also some in some of the other stories, the, the two young children at risk yes. of being... And of course in the religious mm -hmm. story, the, the returning crusader. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, death is an ever-present we we are all going to mm. we are all going to die, mm. and in that sense we are all dying, mm. even as we speak here mm. now, uh, and so it is a, a very major mm. um, concept, psychological feeling, that this is always <coughs> with us. It may happen today, tomorrow, mm. in a mm -hmm. week's time, in a year's time. Mm -hmm. Some people, of course, have already died, mm. you know, psychologically or mm. spiritually, mm. if you will. Mm. Uh, so it has always struck me as being a very um, foolish thing just to discount mm. death. Mm. And I think in the theme of death that I have written, uh, it says how we do put we managed. To, we try to portray death as a sort of pantomime figure, mm. the um, the skeleton with the mm. uh, hourglass, old father time, mm. with his, as if we're trying to make some kind of theatrical mm. performance mm. out of it. But mm -hmm. it's not really something as real mm. as you and I mm -hmm. and this room. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, in writing those endings in that particular way, how are you trying to? To, to bring that message across, if you like, of, of the finality of it, the realness of it, the, the ordinariness of it and, and inevitability of it. I think I was trying to show how often we bring, can bring death upon ourselves. Mm. It isn't something that happens. Mm. You know, when, when I am 85, mm. I will be taken into hospital mm. and I will die. It's not a routine mm -hmm. thing like that. Mm -hmm. It's the un completely mm -hmm. unpredictability mm -hmm. of it. Mm -hmm. well, it's uh, a sense of destiny. A sense of destiny. Mm -hmm. And it also fits in with my notion of um, uncertainty, that mm -hmm. the whole of human existence mm -hmm. is riven by uncertainty. Mm -hmm. We're not sure. We can't be sure of anything, mm -hmm. completely sure of it. Mm -hmm. Everything is based on hope, mm -hmm. on analogy, Just on a slightly lighter note, yeah. um, you know, one of the other themes that comes across very strongly is music. Yes. And, uh, you know, I know how important that is for you, mm. um, you know, and has been through for a lot of times. Do you want to just say a little bit about, about why th that's been part of your, of your writing as well? I think for me music is a, a kind of um, home for my soul. Mm. It's where I feel I truly belong. Mm. Um, so I can listen to... A, a movement of a symphony by Mahler or Haydn or Brahms. Mm -hmm. But for example, in the story Fragments of History, which is about um, a deformed prince and his relationship with his father in the affairs of state, I happened to be listening to uh, Wagner's overture Rienzi. And as in many cases, the music exactly exemplified the nature of the story. Mm. Not that I listened to the music and got the idea of the mm. story, but the, the music somehow matched the story. Mm -hmm. and I, that's happened in quite a mm -hmm. number of, mm -hmm. of the tales. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. Lovely. And just thinking about the future, you know, I, I'm imagining that 
that there will be more stories there and 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 the creation of of more you know more of the canary, yeah. the canary tales uh, is there other are there other themes that that are are, are interesting to you or or trail trains of thought that that might uh, feed into um into your ideas uh not particularly themes i don't work because mm. as i said earlier the themes mm. tend to be grouping mm. categories mm. uh I do have other stories which will be coming out in a later series mm -hmm. and at present I'm working on a, a, a tale of uh, the first woman who takes the first loaf of bread from a baker's shelf in Petrograd during the Russian Revolution mm -hmm. and cries out to all her women friends, take it lasses mm -hmm. off the shelves the propaganda of the deed, mm. deceit, uh, the deed. Mm. so that's what I'm presently next, working on. Next story. Yes. Okay. Thank you very much for talking about Blue Canary Thank Tales. Thank you, it's and been very I look forward nice. to reading the stories I haven't Thank you. <laughs>